Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, today I'm going to have a look at a puzzle sent in by a correspondent called Matthias, who's been watching our videos. Um, he asked us, this was an extreme one, and uh, Matthias even bothered to kind of feed it into Hadoku and see how that would solve it. Um, it came up with an incredible chain of logic that's virtually unfollowable. Um, and Matthias's question, he said, I don't, don't really expect to see a video on this, but can you tell me, is it solvable by a human? Well, we've looked before at what was billed the hardest Sudoku puzzle in the world and worked out that we can't show you how to solve it because it's just too difficult. But this one, well, Simon had a look at it and um, he didn't know how you would go about it logically, so maybe it's a suitable candidate for my method. So first of all, apologies, I'm, I'm using my new camera and yes, there's some curvature on the grid, but you're just going to have to try and imagine it square. If you don't like that, don't watch the video, that's fine. So first of all, I'm just putting in the, the possibilities. That one in the central box, that's the only place it could go. Everywhere else, I'm just making little notation marks, fours down there for the two cells in any box where numbers could go. Sometimes, occasionally, when I'm doing it by hand, three cells are possible. So we've at last got another number in. That six up there was fairly straightforward. In fact, the only cell in the box that was available for it. Now, these sevens are quite neat. Um, having established that these two cells must be eight and six, because we've got eight and six in columns six and five, those ones must be seven and three. That puts the sevens here into those and those two cells. Now, we've got a very interesting seven-one pair between those two cells in this bottom box, and that could be quite helpful. I think I've just about got to the point here. Not quite, but nearly. But I, I think I'll stop here and take up the pencil. So what I'm going to do now, this is the human approach to getting this solved, is bifurcate. So this two up here could go either there or there, and I've guessed that it goes there. And then I'm seeing what follows from that, and that pushes the nine up here, that puts the nine in that box there. So you've now got a five, seven pair here. And there's some quite interesting logic that gradually develops from this. Um, it takes me a long time to spot that this pair up here must include a 9, and they're resolved by that 9. So, um, frustratingly, I am a bit slow here solving this. When I actually did it on paper the first time, I was a bit quicker than this video. So, um, that's disappointing, but there we go. Now, that 7-1 pair is very useful. It rules out those two cells for something like the 6, and that 6 here rules out those two cells, so 6 has to be there. Now, with that two there, quite an important spot is the only place for a, a four now, because there must be a four in these two cells here. So the four in this box must be in one of those two, and it can't, because of that four, it can't be there. So that's sorted out, that four. We've got a nine, seven pair up here. In fact, it is nine there, as I, I've mentioned, and seven there. Um, just working on that at the moment. Um, and yeah, I think I finally figured out the 9 there, right, fair enough. Now that, with the 9-6 up there and a 9-6 here, that actually gives us a 9-6 pair in this two cells here. There they go. So, and that rules out a lot, the only, there's only one place left where the 1 can go, that positions to 2. Um, and we've got a 4-5 pair here. Now, the first bit of uniqueness comes in. If that's a 4-5 pair, these bottom two can't be a 4-5 pair or, this, or the grid would be impossible. This is all on the presumption that this 2 is right, remember, and we haven't proved that wrong to this point. But because that can't be a 4-5 pair, the 3 has to be in the bottom row, and now we can move along. That's helped resolve that there's a 5-8 pair there, a 6-3 pair here. Um, struggled a bit. Oh yes, the only place for a 1 up in here now is in that cell. Um, and I think this is a 3, 4, 5 set, but we can't quite work out yet which is which. 
Um, so we've used one uniqueness pairing, that 4-5 there already, and in a moment we're going to come to use another one. Oh yes, that one down there had resolved this 7-1 pair, which was very useful. Now here, that pair of cells can't be 6-8 because it would mirror that 6-8 pair by uniqueness as well. So it would have to be 6-5 and suddenly everything's gone wrong now. This cell is impossible because we've got two ones up there. The only last thing in the column it could have been was a one. So it took ages from positing that two, but eventually I proved that that must be wrong. You know, we filled virtually the whole grid after that, and it's a mark of extremely difficult puzzles that you can come across grids where one choice allows you almost to fill the complete grid, but not quite. So, as I would often do in a competition, I have to ply the rubber and um, get rid of everything I put in before, try and be clear about what I do. Now I can correct that too. That must go there. And that allows these two to yield a two down here because of that two. So we can quickly place all the twos in the grid. But actually, disappointingly, we haven't made much further progress than that. And in fact, now I'm going to have to do another bifurcation. So I assume I'm going to assume a one there and a seven there. And this seven one pair, whichever way around they are, there's going to be some impact in the rest of the grid. So I'm assuming a one seven pair there. That allows me to place the seven here. Um, it takes me a bit of a while to spot what one actually can do here. Again, still this nine up here is, is a certainty because that nine has to be in rows two or three. The nine in this box has to be in rows two or three. So the nine in this box has to be in row one. But for some reason, I keep not spotting that. It's very annoying. Um, so, you know, it's easy after the event, but uh, even though I had solved it previously, I still kept on not spotting it. So the six is the six here and the six here. Put the six into one of those two boxes, even without spotting the nine. Um, and that's sorted out that six. I think I am going to have to spot the nine to make proper progress here. Otherwise, I'm just stuck. And again, remember, this is all based on if this one seven pair is organized like that. If it's not, we're going to have to get the rubber out again and go back and do it again. But at least we are achieving a human solution, even if it's not by the, the logical way that obviously many of our viewers prefer to see. So, you know, I think the, the conclusion from this video is, I'm sorry, we don't have a brilliant logical method to show you of how this this can be solved, but we do have a method to show you that a human can solve it. Um, and that's as good as we can aim for, really, um, in certain puzzles, and this is one of those. So I'm not saying that we necessarily encourage you to send us the hardest puzzle, I've finally got the nine there, that, that you see, but we'll always have a look at them and try and work out if we can see our way through them. Of course, we're not superhuman, we'll often miss things, if you have some clever way of solving this puzzle that you can show us, like some brilliant X-Wing or Y-Wing that Hidoku didn't find, then do let us know, because it would be very interesting to see if there was a, a neater way than kind of what some people call forcing the solution. So we've finally got 69217 here. Um, and 9 across there. Um, I think I've m probably missed something up here as well in, in this box because um, although five goes across in row two, oh, now I've managed to place the seven up there. That was the only place it could be finally. That, that then starts sorting out this box. That's a seven. This must be five and nine. Ah, oh, and it's gone wrong. So... That didn't take long, um, which I'm not sure which bit went wrong, in fact, there. I think once that seven went in, that had to be three seven there, that put the nine there. Suddenly I had two nines in the same row. So that proved that that one seven pattern was wrong. There has to be seven one instead. And hopefully now we can 
you know, the grid's a bit of a mess with all the rubbing out, and one has to be a bit careful in, in competition or even in solving like this to make sure that you're not accidentally seeing an old pencil mark and thinking it's, it's something that you've validly proved at the moment. So again, care has to be taken with this method, um, if one can call it a method. And uh, finally, I think we're now approaching what should be, I mean, we've ruled out the other possibilities and, and as Sherlock Holmes said, once you've ruled out the impossible, whatever remains must be the solution. So the ones can all be placed as a result of getting that one right. Should have spotted that a bit quicker. Still, this nine is available. I uh, finally got it there. Okay. Um, that puts the nine there, six there. Um, that's quite useful, I think. One, six, four, seven, two across that row. Not all that helps. Um, I finally noted that both the bottom right and this cell are the only places where four or five can be in the final column. So that's enabled me to place a six here, and now I'm finally off and finishing off the puzzle. Um, nine, five, yes, that's all resolving. Seven, eight, three, two, nine, five there, six there. Must be certain. Um, I mean, there's a lot that, that, that is actually done now, and I just need to see where I'm going, and, and it's all resolved yet. Yeah, five there. Okay, so that's resolved the four, five. Four, eight is resolved by that four. And now it's just finishing off at this point. So, I mean, it's taken a while. It's a, it's a tough puzzle. As I say, it's not the first time I solved it. So, you know, re it really puts up a lot of resistance, but it is solved by a human in one way at least. Um, if you're not a fan of forced solutions by bifurcation, then you won't have enjoyed it much, but that's the way it goes. That's sometimes how you need to solve a puzzle, in my opinion. So thanks very much for watching. I hope that's been of some interest, at least, to you. Um, and thanks to Matthias for sending it in. Sometimes this is the way we have to go with really tricky puzzles. But... Uh, Thanks for watching and hope to see you again on Cracking the Cryptic. So bye for now.